You tell a harrowing story about the first transatlantic cable. Yes, it's a story of an entrepreneur with incredible stamina, Cyrus Field. Uh, the project started in 1854 when he found out that the Atlantic Ocean between Newfoundland and Ireland uh, consisted of a plateau uh, that was relatively shallow and covered with uh, shelves. Uh, while sh relatively shallow, it was still two and a half miles uh, deep. But this should make the laying of a cable possible. Uh, he commissioned the manufacture of 3,000 miles of cable, about uh, three quarters of an inch uh, thick. Uh, the laying began in 1857 from Ireland using two British and two American warships. After 350 miles, the cable parted and the ships returned to Ireland. A year later, in May uh, 1858, they started again. This time, they met in the middle of the ocean, spliced the cable, and then took off in opposite directions. Um, after the cable ruptured, twice the ships went back to port. In July of the same year they tried for a third time and they reached the opposite shores in August without an incident. The official celebration took place in New York. Uh, Queen Victoria sent uh, a message and the whole town went wild uh, there were solemn services at uh, Trinity Church, followed by a 16-hour procession. But they knew there was something wrong with the cable. Uh, it had taken more than 16 hours for the 98-word message from the Queen. Uh, tra transmission became weaker and weaker, and to compensate, they stepped up the voltage and in doing so irreparably damaged the cable. At the very day of the celebration the cable finally died. Field made plans for a new cable but he couldn't re, uh, raise money during the Civil War. Then luck finally came his way in the form of a ship. She was the Great Eastern at 700 feet and 32,000 tons, she was five times the size of any other ship. <coughs> uh, the Great Eastern had been designed uh, to make the run from England to Australia around the Horn of Africa without refueling. But then the Suez Canal was being built and she became suddenly obsolete. Not only was the run around the horn no longer necessary. She was too big to fit through the canal. Field bought her for $25,000. She was ideally suited for the job. Uh, she had two paddle wheels and a propeller uh, as well, which made her very maneuverable and she could hold the entire length of the cable. Now, Field realized also that he had gotten bad advice. So she, he put the new man in charge, uh, William Thompson, better known as Lord Kelvin. Uh, Kelvin immediately increased the diameter of the cable to 1.1 inches and built a more sensitive receiver. So at the sending end, um, there was no longer any need for destructively high voltages. The Great Eastern took off from Ireland in 1865. After only 85 miles, they discovered a short 10 miles uh, astern. And in trying to reel in the cable, the cable broke and they had to return to shore. But on the second run, a year later, uh, the Great Eastern was able to lay the entire length of the cable. 
It took Cyrus Field 12 years to complete the project and he had to cross the Atlantic 64 times. Uh, the cost was eight times what he had originally estimated, uh, but it paid off for him. He became a rich man. The Great Eastern wasn't so lucky. Uh, for any other job, she was simply too big and too costly to operate. So she ended up as a showboat and then was sold for scrap.